What's up, future officers? My name is Tejas, and I welcome you all once again to iLead Compilations. Today, we are looking at all the important science and technological developments, advancements, which has happened in the month of December in the year 2025. We will be covering 10 important issues which have high exam specific importance in a very fast paced manner, in a very quick paced manner. Okay, so even though we are doing it at a quick pace, we will see that most important details are not missed. So let's quickly move on to issue number one today. Under issue number one, we are talking about something called Candida auris. An Indian led research has warned us about something called Candida auris. So this is a multi drug resistant fungal pathogen. So the, the problem is that it is becoming more virulent and it is spreading at a very fast paced manner globally. The cause of concern here is that a lot of people are dying. There is high mortality even after treatment. So this pathogen is said to cause a lot of invasive infections. So what do we mean by invasive infections? We see that fever, chills, blood pressure, bloodstream infections, bacterial sepsis. So all of these are what we mean by invasive infections. So because of how deadly this is seeming, we have classified this as an emergency global health threat. So what would be the vectors and the reservoirs for this? It could be mainly hospitals, basically human skin to skin contact, medical devices. So the main features here are its high virulence. It is multi-drug resistant. That is even different combinations of drugs are not working against it. And it's morphological flexibility. That is, it is changing from one form to another. Let's move on to issue number two. Issue number two, we are talking about something called Path Genie software. So this is a software for fast tracking the drug discovery. It is developed by the Ministry of Science and Technology and the SN Bose National Center for Basic Sciences, Kolkata. This is a new computer open source software. So basically what this does is that it simulates rare molecular events and drug unbinding from protein targets. It is mainly based out of natural selection. So basically it tracks on how the molecules are moving, what works and what doesn't. Let's move on to issue number three. Under issue number three, we are talking about a galaxy. This galaxy is called as Alakananda galaxy. So the Indian astronomers have discovered a galaxy called Alakananda. So what do we have to know about this galaxy? Alakananda is a spiral galaxy. So basically what you have to understand about different types of galaxies is that there is something called spiral galaxy, elliptical galaxy and irregular galaxy. Our Milky Way is also a spiral galaxy. So under a spiral galaxy, there will be a lot of mass of stars in the center and projecting arms outside the mass of the center stars. So there will be a lot of stars outside also in these spiraling arms around the center mass of stars. So what's very interesting about this Alakananda galaxy is that this galaxy was formed just 1.5 billion years after our Big Bang. According to which data do we confirm this? According to James Webb Space Telescope data. So as per our observation, there is a rotating disk with two spiral arms projecting from the center mass of stars. It is named very symbolically, like we call Milky Way as Mandakini. So just like how in our Panjganga, we have Mandakini and Alakananda, which together form something called as Rudra Prayag. It is one of those Prayags which take place right before Ganga reaches Haridwar. So similarly here also, Milky Way is our galaxy which is Mandakini and Alakananda, another galaxy is symbolically named. What's very interesting to note is that in this Alakananda galaxy, there is an active formation of 60 solar masses per year. Under issue number four, we are talking about a mosquito. This mosquito is called as Anaphilis stephensi. This is an urban mosquito which persists in cities like New Delhi. In fact, it's becoming a menace in cities like New Delhi. So because of the increasing population of this mosquito, Anaphilis stephensi, we are going to find it very difficult to achieve our elimination of malaria by 2030 target. So we have two targets. One is eliminate malaria by 2030. 
Second is zero indigenous cases by 2070. Both are going to be a little difficult. This mosquito is capable of spreading Plasmodium plasiferum and Plasmodium vivax. Both these things also it is capable of spreading. So right now, because of this capability, it is globally being recognized as an invasive vector. So this mosquito, where is it a native of? It is native to South Asia and the Arabian Peninsula. But recently, it's also been found in countries like Africa. So this is what you have to know about the Anaphilis Stephensi mosquito. Let's move on to issue number five. We are talking about something called as a Dhruv 64 microprocessor. So this is an indigenously built microprocessor. It is the third indigenous microprocessor after Tejas 32 and Tejas 64. So after this microprocessor, in future, we are going to have processors like Danush 64 and Danush 64 Plus. So talking a little bit about Dhruv 64 microprocessor, it is an indigenously built 1 gigahertz 64 bit dual core microprocessor. So because we have successfully built this, we have achieved a major milestone for our country. So this is going to help us in our semiconductor self-reliance journey where because it is being indigenously produced, our import dependence on processors will reduce. This will increase our vision and our journey towards a more digital India and Atmanirbhar Bharat. This processor will be based on something called RISCV open source architecture. It is designed by something called as CDAC, Center for Development of Advanced Computing. It is developed by something called as MDP. Now what is MDP? It is Microprocessor Development Program which is guided under the METI. METI is Ministry of electronics and information technology. So where will be the application of this? The application will be in 5G, IOTs, industrial automation, etc. Let's quickly move on to issue number six. Under issue number six, we are talking about something called as brain computer interface. So this brain computer interface is a kind of neurotechnology. So what this basically does is that it interprets brain signals and converts this to digital commands to central external devices like computers, smartphones, robotic limbs, wheelchairs, etc. So basically what happens here is that it is a two-way communication link between our brain and the machines. So how does this work? The first step is signal capture. So basically what happens here? Electrodes, which could be invasive or non-invasive, record electrical activity from neurons. In the second step, they are talk about something called neural decoding. So what is this neural decoding? The machine learning algorithms, they translate patterns to intentions. Example, move arms, you select certain letters. So basically you send these signals and it translates it into that activity. The third step is device control. So decoded signals activate the external device. Here robotic limbs, speech synthesizers and drones, all of them they could be controlled remotely using the brain. The fourth step is a feedback loop. Basically what happens is that as this activity keeps on getting repeated, 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 a continuous decoding happens which improves its efficiency. So what is the use of this particular technology? See there is a lot of medical uses. One is Parkinson's patients who have a little difficulty to move their limbs, there is some nervous problems, it will help them immensely. People who are having a stroke, who are suffering from depression, they could have spinal injuries. All of them would get greatly benefited by this technology. The next thing is assistive technology. That is how you operate your computers, how you operate your cell phones, how you operate uh, different devices, your tablets, etc. All of this is going to become much more easier. The third one is defense and security, where soldiers, instead of putting their own lives at stake, they could control the drone swarms very remotely. Moving on to issue number seven, there's something called as the second WHO Global Summit on Traditional Medicine. So this has happened in December 2025 in Bharat Mandapam, 
which is in New Delhi. So what is this? This is a high level global health summit, which is conducted by the WHO to advance traditional medicine okay and slowly the aim is to integrate the traditional medicine into the other set and classification of medicines the host is the who and co-hosted by the ministry of ayush government of india of course it gets a lot of support by who gmtc which is in jamnagar what would be the features of this the first feature is that there would be a lot of evidence-based integration. The effort here is scientific validation of traditional medicine through research, clinical trials and quality benchmarks. The second main important feature here is that there is global participation. More than 100 plus countries have participated in this. The two delegations of ministries, policy makers, scientists and indigenous medicine practitioners all of them were part of this summit. The third one is policy harmonization. So basically what happens here, there will be a 10 year roadmap which will be set for the future. The fourth one is digital health and infrastructure which would be integrated into the realm of traditional medicine. Let's move on to issue number eight. We are talking about something called AstroSat. It is the 10 year anniversary of this ultraviolet imaging telescope. So it marks a decade of major scientific discoveries from this satellite called AstroSat. This is India's first dedicated satellite for astronomy. So what you have to know about this satellite is that it has a twin telescope. It has a UV imager aboard. And one very special thing about this satellite is that it does simultaneous observations in UV, soft X-ray, hard X-ray and optical rays. So basically in one go, it is doing multiple observations. This was launched in 2015 by PSLV C30 and it was placed in a 650 kilometer orbit. Its designated life was supposed to last for five years, but as we can see, it has extended much beyond its intended capacity. The major discoveries in this past 10 years is blue stragglers, UV disks of dwarf galaxies, novas in Andromeda, hot companions of B stars. Moving on to issue number nine, we are talking of something called as PM Vani. That's nothing but Prime Minister's Wi-Fi Access Network Interface. This is National Public Wi-Fi Framework where affordable broadband access through decentralized Wi-Fi hotspots by small entrepreneurs would be given. The implementing authority is the Department of Telecommunications in the Ministry of Communications. So if you have to speak a little bit about this, this was launched in 2020. So why is this in news? The government has recently given an update to the parliament. They have told that there will be 3.9 lakh Wi-Fi hotspots in India in the month of November 2025. So this is the latest update. One thing we have to know that is that it supports national digital communication policy in 2016. So all of this PM Vani is in lines with this particular policy. The features of this scheme is that one need not have any license to set up this PM Vani. There will be a four tire authentication for it. There will be FTTH support. FTTH means fiber to home. So this will ease in the broadband connections. The fourth point is the mobile data offload. So basically what this does is that it diverts the mobile data traffic onto the Wi-Fi hotspot. The last one is the 10th issue which is issue number 10. We're talking about something called planetary defense exercise on 3i Atlas. But sir, what is this 3i Atlas? It is the third ever interstellar object which we have noticed in space. That is an object which is outside our solar system. So Europe recently has launched the world's largest drill. This is a planetary defense drill to test how the nations track, respond to near Earth threats. So basically, this is a chance for each of these countries with big space programs to test out their early warning systems, their tracking capabilities, their citizen communication channels. All of this, it could be tested as this particular object is approaching. So this was launched together by NASA, ESA and UNIAWN. What is this IAWN now? It is International Asteroid Warning Network. So because of this, 
joint exercise of each country testing out its preparedness for the first time is being done. Okay, so that's all. We have covered all the important issues of December 2025. I hope that this video found relevance in your preparation and it has helped you to crack more questions and write better answers. With this hope, this is Stages signing off. I'll probably see you in the next one. Thank you and have a nice day.